Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review Cheaper by the Dozen, the 50th version of it. Not really. The third version, I guess. You had the 1950s, you had the Steve Martin one, and now you have this one. And this is a Disney Plus original film from director Gail Lerner, who has worked as a producer on things like Will and Grace and Blackish. And you have this film, which has a 2.9 on IMDb, and I'm pretty sure got woke bombed. Because, you know, if you have a blended family this time. And you have adopted kids. You have mixed race kids. It deals with a lot of social commentary on basically the idea of this family is the Bakers. Because Bakers doesn't lulls. And they own a breakfast restaurant, which I'm down, and they wind up hitting big on sauces that Jeff, and that our main character, Zach Braff, Paul, winds up selling, and they make a bunch of money, and they move into this big mansion, and, you know, security's just like, I'm just gonna warn you, it's just like, oh, do you ask this to everybody? Who are these kids? They're my kids. And all of this judgment, all of the social commentary about racism and politics and all these different kinds of things, implicit biases, all done on the very, very, very surface. And like I see a lot of people complaining that this movie is woke, doing stuff like that, and it's just like, that's not an issue. Like, just because it's trying to deal with issues doesn't mean that's a problem. But the problem is, it doesn't do it well. It's just so blunt and on the surface, and it's all spelled out for you so obnoxiously. And this film sets you up with so much exposition and so many moving pieces. Uh, there's just trying to do way too much in terms of its commentary, all of the different subplots with all the kids. Because, like, I don't recall every single kid getting a subplot in those other Cheaper by the Dozen films. And this film's almost two hours and just feels like it drags at times, too. And there's just too many unlikable characters. And, like, you have... Both of them have exes and neither of them are very likable. Um, you like Zach Braff at the beginning, but he turns so much to this work-obsessed jerk that out of nowhere, like flip of a coin. That's annoying. Gabrielle Union, I enjoy her for most of the film, and, you know, it becomes harder for her, and she's trying to deal with things, and then you have all the kids turn into little jerks, except for, like, the twinses. The two pairs of twins are cute, like, the whole entire movie, but, like, some of the other ones are just, like, the second they get into this rich place, it's just, like, bam, different. But some of the kids are really likable, and I enjoy their arcs, and trying to remember, I don't even know how they remember all their kids' names, um, some of the thing, some of them that really stood out to me that I really, like, Deja, she wants to be a basketball star, she gets a lot of time spent on her, and she just turns into, like, a unlikable, just like, I'm gonna do what I want kind of girl right when they go to this rich school because she's acting out. Uh, Ella, really annoying, don't like her. DJ, I like him. He has the most enjoyable arc of, like, trying to, like, get with this, like, goth girl. He's a nerdy comic book kid. Harley, who happens to be in a wheelchair, she is really funny and snarky. Uh, Horace deals with a lot of racism at school, and he partners up with their cousin, because Horace is adopted, and the cousin has a mother in rehab. He's from, like, the, um, like, the not-nicer areas in LA and stuff like that and then you have all the younger kids too who are a lot of fun but like in general you just have so many moving pieces and not enough of them feel meaningful or important or interesting or likable uh you have tons of cliches and tropes galore of like coming of age stories like because they try to balance so much they have to lean on expectations and just just fall right into them just overstuffed Braff and Union, I think, do really nice jobs of bringing some charisma and chemistry and some heart to this film, but it's just trying too much. And you might mostly enjoy the kids, and but, like, there's just too much going on, too much to latch on to, too much trying to be said, 
and not done in a deep and meaningful way all on the surface it just feels like a hollow remake that's trying to be more modern trying to have social commentary but not really investing the time and energy to make it more poignant and meaningful and generally this just feels like a throwaway sequel just thrown out on Disney Plus which doesn't surprise me at all. Remake. Yep. Throwaway remake. Just thrown away on Disney Plus. And that's what it feels like. Just a movie just thrown away by Disney. Hopefully you'll stream it and enjoy it enough. It kind of felt like that Home Alone movie. It had that same kind of energy and effort of a remake. But those are my thoughts on Cheaper by the Dozen. Let me know what you think and let's talk some movies. But thank you as always for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.